Welcome to the Hey Taylor podcast, where ambition is a gift, not a burden, where what you desire for your life is 100% possible, and where happiness and success can coexist beautifully. In this podcast, I'm bringing you casual conversations on deep alignment, self-mastery, and high performance. Each week, my guests and I will guide you to go big with your dreams and reconnect you to your infinite potential because I believe you deserve wild happiness and success in every area of your life. On this podcast, we don't shy away from the deep topics and tough love because we know that personal development isn't about going through life. It's about growing through life. And I'm your host, Taylor Thompson. I'm a high performance strategist, business mentor, multi-passionate serial entrepreneur, soon to be author and your breakthrough personal development bestie. Pull up your note-taking app and let's unlock your next level of happiness and success. Your highest potential is waiting. Have you ever been told that you are doing too many things or that you seem a little flaky or scattered because you are so passionate about so many things? I have. (laughs) And you will learn in this episode too. I have literally been told that my life makes somebody dizzy because I enjoy so much doing so many different things. Well, there is a word for that and that word is multi-passionate not scattered, not flaky, (laughs) multi-passionate. And today we are talking all about that. And I have one of my favorite people on the planet on this podcast here for episode three, and that is Grace Blacksey. She has been my business strategist for the last year and has been just an incredible friend. (laughs) We have built such a beautiful friendship and I am so excited, so honored to have her as one of the first few episodes on this podcast. Actually, back in October, I went to San Diego to visit her and actually meet her in real life because we talked almost every day for the last year. We finally got to meet in person. So this podcast episode, we recorded in person outside on her back deck. It was so vibey. So if any of the audio is a little weird, it's because we were outside. And yeah, it was just, it was so special. It was so, so special to just be in her presence in real life. I think she is one of the wisest people that I have ever met. And it just made so much sense for her to come on the podcast and talk about being multi-passionate because this is actually something that I came to her for um, when I first hired her over a year ago. And it was because I was, I just felt lost. I felt so incredibly lost in both life and business because I had so many different passions. I just did not know how to weave that into my business and make everything fit. And Grace truly has been such a gift to my life and to my business because, well, one of the biggest reasons being because she has such a unique take on being multi-passionate. And I know she works with so many multi-passionate entrepreneurs and leaders and she has really been able to help me decondition myself from this niche culture. And that has been, that has taken me nearly a full year to do because that conditioning that we have in life is so incredibly, it goes so deep, (laughs) goes so deep and so wide because we are told that we need to pick one thing. We are told to have like one job that's very niche, whether you work as in a career or you work for yourself, very niche position, and maybe like one hobby in your personal life, right? That's kind of what we are told. If we are doing anything more than that, that we're told that we come off scattered. We come off flaky. We come off just all over the place. And so being able to kind of rid myself of a lot of that conditioning has been so powerful for me and my business and my life and really being able to come back to who I am and really embrace multi-passionateness and really have it become multi-passionate magic instead of multi-passionate mayhem. (laughs) And Grace has just been such an integral part in that. She has really helped me with all of that. So 
And I know so many of you are multi-passionate. So regardless, if you have an eight to five job, if you have 10 side hustles, if you own a business, if you own multiple businesses, if you are multi-passionate, this conversation is really going to be good for you because Grace has such a unique perspective on multi-passionate. And so we really have a conversation about what multi-passionate means and the power actually and magic that comes from being multi-passionate and how to actually really make it work. So here we go. I am so excited for you to listen in on all of this beauty and wisdom that Grace is about to share with us. Yay, this is fun. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> all right, welcome everybody. I am so excited you are hopping onto our conversation here. I am sitting here in person yes. with Grace Blacksey of the Quench Collective. And we are going to talk all about multi-passionateness, being a multifaceted human being. This conversation is going to be super beneficial if you are an entrepreneur, even if you're not an entrepreneur, if you are passionate about multiple things and like you feel confused, alone, like frustrated, like whatever it might be, we're going to dig into all the good things today. So even to, to set the stage, we're hanging out in San Diego. Yes. <laughs> I am here for a couple days hanging out. I'm so excited. Grace is showing me all the amazing things. Um, we're also hanging out outside. So if you hear dogs, birds, whatever lawn it might mowers, be, lawnmowers, construction, um, we're hanging out outside because it's super vibey yes. and comfy. Um, so, and this podcast is all about casual conversations. And so yeah. comfiness is like a part of that. Yeah. We so. just like kicked off our shoes and got comfortable because yes, we have to buckle up for this conversation. <laughs> and we're ways. drinking lake water. Yeah, chlorophyll, chlorophyll water. water has been poured. It's in our cups. Yes, we feel are feeling good. Yes, <laughs> so awesome. So Grace, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, like your story? What's Quench Collective? Tell us all the goodness. Oh my gosh, it's so funny because. If you would have asked me this question even like two years ago or five years ago, you probably would have gotten a different answer. And I feel like that's also so in alignment with the conversation that we're having because it's evolved in such beautiful mm-hmm. ways. Um, but what it is today and what I believe the future of it to be is a community and education platform for modern leaders and entrepreneurs who truly want to do business differently, who want to stand out in the crowd in the most authentic way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's so powerful. I think everyone's probably had their own journey or their own version of this, but we tend to maybe if we start our own businesses or even if you don't even if you're listening to this and you're not an entrepreneur or you don't own a small business but if you are you know have a job and you really love your job or maybe you don't wherever you're at i think the whole thing is we kind of tend to conform if you will to the way of doing things either around the workplace in our organization within our business that we think is the only way to do it and the reality is they're not. And we have these really unique and specific designs within us. And also I think we all have our own unique passion and -hmm. drive to do things. And so if we can build your business, design, I like to say design your business around that, I think the possibilities are really endless because we are multifaceted human beings. We do have so many layers. The things that we do are extremely nuanced. And so I, my hope is that the Quench Collective is that we can always embrace that mm-hmm. and really help people through every stage of their um, of their process, wherever wherever that's at. And so for us, that looks like um, through our educational programs right now, it's um, our master classes, our forthcoming membership, and our mastermind. And um, in the future, you know, hopefully in a more physical manifestation too of how we can really create space, create an environment for you as whoever you are and that multi-passionate or maybe you're more of that person who's all about mastery, whatever that looks like is that you're given the opportunity, the space, the tools and the resources to build what you want to build, to design what you want to design and bring that to the forefront. Ultimately, hopefully that just brings your passion to life in a bigger way. Yes. Yes. I love that. (laughs) I mean, like being within like the quench community and like your programming over the last year, that's that's literally exactly what I've experienced. Oh, good. I'm so glad that it's like checked out. <laughs> yes, yes. And everybody like always has amazing things to say too. Like, Aww. I love it. It's so just, it's such a good community. Community is extremely, it's the, it's the backbone of what it is, right? It's like I always say, it, like, sure, I may have just 
pressed open on the virtual proverbial door, if you will, but it is all of you that make it what it is. And that's been the most beautiful thing to watch is community is like the, the heartbeat of it. And yes. so much I feel like of my world exists in community. And so, um, yeah, it would be nothing without that for yeah. sure. <laughs> yes. So this is like, as we're recording this, like yeah. a few weeks ago, I dubbed you the like official, unofficial <laughs> yes. queen of like guiding multi-passionate leaders Yeah, because you've helped me so much over the last year, like kind of like mini background story on me is I've just like for my entire life, mm-hmm. just always been so multi-passionate, like want to start a million businesses. I want to have a million hobbies, like do a million things, just yeah. all of this. And, um, and I guess it really, like, I really started, well, probably actually when I was younger, mm-hmm. I always want to try, th- like, I was a girl that like, I want to try gymnastics, like mm-hmm. super, like super passionate about gymnastics. And then it's like, get halfway through and I'm like, mm, I don't know, maybe like I want to play the drums <laughs> and now I want to dance and now I yeah. want to like golf Roller and skate. like now yeah. I want to whatever. Um, so it was like kind of lots of bouncing around when I was younger. I mean, and even like up until recently, like what is it that I love doing? And it's been like a huge like experiment for me through that process. But through that like entire journey, just like always having like listening to people like trying to put me in a box Mm -hmm. or saying pick one thing, niche your business, like had lots of business experts tell me that. And like, while that can like definitely be a strategy for many people, like if you are really multi-passionate at your core and like now what we have found like through human design, Mm -hmm. I'm a manifesting generator, um, that like I'm uniquely made and other manifesting generators to not be kind of put into that box and not niche necessarily and such. But like I started working with Grace and she's like, let's unpack all this, open it up. <laughs> like let's, yes. Like if yeah. you want to do all the things, like let's kind of make it work and stuff. Yeah. And so that was so refreshing. Um, but I'm curious, like what do you see a lot just like in the world or the online space yeah. or whatever around being multi-passionate that yeah. is just kind of creates obstacles for people essentially. I mean, it's, it's something that I always hate to see because what I see the most is people is let's just say majority, not people really like the majority of messaging out there is saying, is telling you to, um, niche down, right? Let's, let's Mm -hmm. just start with like the very first one you typically always hear. You have to niche down in order like that. The the message is you have to niche down in order to have success. Mm -hmm. The the reality is it's just not true. (laughs) Like, that's not the case here. Yeah. The case is that, and that's why that message doesn't work for everyone. Mm -hmm. And you do have such unique bandwidth within your energy, your body, within your business, within you and who you are to do things. Um, If you're not familiar with human design yet, I encourage you to take the test. It's free online to do so. And maybe you can put in the show notes or something a link to it. Yeah, I'll put that in the show notes. um, And if you do know what you are, then great. We'll talk probably more specifically around manifesting generators today because I see this the most with Mm -hmm. them. And I was so grateful that Taylor, like going back to what you said, that you kind of said that to me because around being like this unofficial um, coach for multi-passionate people and because I've thought that for so long but it was so you know it's when you always see like a reflection back so I'm grateful to you for that um and it's true I really love to help people see a way to give themselves their their own permission to do Mm -hmm. something and to like live outside of that box yeah so how is that possible and it makes sense that you've felt like you were maybe doing something wrong, if you will, or not doing mm-hmm. it the right way or doing things and they don't pan out. Yeah. Or they pan out a little bit, but not the whole way. Like the, the, the launch was successful, but it didn't fill me up from mm-hmm. like a soul space sort of standard. Yeah. And the reason being is because I typically find that it's out of alignment with what we want. It's that I don't want to just serve women in business. I also want to serve men in business where I also want to serve someone over here. Like, I don't just want that. I also want that. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that you can have that. Yeah. It's, it's so real. 
and especially if it lights you up. And so, you know, manifesting generators are really like those builders and doers of the world. And they are meant to bring, they are, they have the capacity and the bandwidth to have many irons in the fire, mm -hmm. right? And so you are, I used to even say, I'm sure on many podcasts I've even said this, like multi, you know, like multitasking is a myth. That's not yeah. true for manifesting generators. Like, and I guess I don't mean like doing the dishes and like patting your head at the same yeah. time. I mean more <laughs> like having truly like your, again, you know, imaginary hands and all of these different, um, and all of these different ideas, projects, mm -hmm. etc. So you guys really are that and you move at a pace that is quick because you are constantly being downloaded and inspired by mm -hmm. new ideas and exciting things and you want to you want to move on them typically yeah. and you should you should move on them if mm -hmm. they light you up um, but what can happen I find is that not only are you always told to niche down but typically if you look maybe back to growing up your youth or you know whatever time in your life maybe you're still being told this as an adult however it doesn't really age it isn't really the thing here but more just your experience of um, you, because you are multi-talented, multi-passionate, multi-dimensional, you're probably good at a lot of different things. And so mm -hmm. people have come to you and said like, oh, Taylor, gosh, you're so great at planting. You should start a planting business. Or Taylor, you're so great at, um, at health. You should be a health coach. You're so great at this. And it really steers us in these yeah. directions, but that's what they see in us and it might not light us up. And mm -hmm. so we are kind of like in this, and this happens to everyone, it really doesn't matter your type, but we're typically living in a land of like looking for validation from the yeah. outside in when it really needs to be the other way around, right? Yeah, <laughs> and still so, working on that. <laughs> oh, same, every single day, every <laughs> single day. So I think that something that's really powerful is that is when, um, is when instead you are celebrated for those dimensions, like mm -hmm. for all the things that you are. And you'll even, you know, I hear a lot of people say like, oh my gosh, my parents always said, oh, so-and-so you're, it's so, you're, it's so frustrating. You start something and you don't, and you don't finish it. Or you, um, like you pick one, pick just yeah. one, you yep. know, pick one thing. And it's like, that actually adds more stress onto our manifesting generators than anything. Yes. Because it makes them feel like they're in a box and you Taylor, and also a few of our, um, our, my other client, well, m many of my other clients, I should say, I have this unique client type. I will say that mm -hmm. I work with often. That is if you're into Enneagram, the Enneagram three, mm -hmm. and, um, they are the, again, the achievers, the doers, the box tickers, like they, they, and they do it, man. Like you really, we love threes because mm -hmm. they are able to stick to a schedule and get the thing done and move the needle forward. Mm -hmm. And we love them for that reason. However, when you have this unique design when you're this high achiever and then you have this manifesting generator energy of this like truly who you are like deeply in your soul designed mm -hmm. to be, you have resistance because the manifesting generator is asking you to step out of the box, to play, to try things out, to collect data and make your next move and to embrace your creativity, to embrace the multi-passions mm -hmm. that you have. Like these are those people, you know, we look at and we're like, oh my gosh, that entrepreneur, they have all these businesses and they're so successful. There's a really good chance it's a manifesting generator, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Like, we look at them with these like googly eyes of, oh my gosh, I'm so obsessed with this person. How are they able to do it? But they were most likely met with those same challenges of people telling them like, you can't do it because you're not focusing on one thing or you can't do it because mm -hmm. you have too many offers or you can't do it because you're not focused in on one person that you're serving. Yeah. And it's just, again, it is instead of it being something that we highlight in people and that's a negative thing, it's your superpower. And mm -hmm. so how can we actually bring it to the forefront of what you do so that you can constantly be lit up? And we find, of course, when you're lit up, you're excited about something, yep. you then become magnetized, meaning that you pull in opportunities and people and experiences into your orbit, if you will, that are for you, mm -hmm. that are attracted to your own unique energy. And so, um, however, if you know, and if you're listening and you have that sort of thing, I usually say this is with ones and threes, you live inside of a box because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And remember, we are the only people who put ourselves in boxes. We yeah. tend to blame this on other people, but it's usually us that I feel really comfortable in this box. I feel really comfortable with this structure and this plan and this to-do list or whatever it is. And the manifesting generator is really coaxing you out of that. And mm -hmm. so it quite literally is just this 
pull and it, it, it can lead to what I find with my clients and community members is feeling totally drained, feeling like you um, aren't moving the needle, feeling yeah. totally unaligned, whatever that looks like. But if you can really embrace the fact that embrace that multi-passionate and embrace the fact that your three actually can be a benefit to your manifesting generator. Like I will say in this case, the MG comes first here. Like it has to. And I feel like in (laughs) the healthiest form, maybe the healthiest version of three, um, it would benefit the most Mm -hmm. from that because what it means is that you've given yourself, and I've seen this in you Taylor many, many times and highs, lows and all the things, all the ways in between is when you give yourself the permission to dream, when Mm -hmm. you give yourself the permission to do something, maybe, you know, we always say take messy action. Mm -hmm. That, we say take messy action to a one, an eager one or three, and they panic, right? They're like, oh, 100%. (laughs) It makes me, it makes my palms sweaty, like thinking about it. But I'm like, I'm getting better at it, but it just, yeah, it really does. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Want everything planned out. Everything planned out. And still, to this day, I have not met one, three, that has taken messy action and it's not turned out well for them. Yeah. Truly. I know. It is it every single time. And it's such a, like, it, it just, I mean, like, I'm hand over heart right now because it's like, how, how do we create more opportunities and experiences to lift multi-passionate people up versus put them in the corner, put them in the box, put them back into this, put them back into that. And you typically are, you know, speaking to those of you who feel multi-passionate, wherever you're at again Mm -hmm. you typically are going to be called to maybe do your own thing because if you have if you're in a if you're in doing something where you have poor leadership or poor management it's um can be extremely detrimental to someone who's Mm multi-passionate and it can be really constricting to your creativity and so i guess the biggest thing to ask you is it for you to ask yourself is does this light me up and how can I just literally do less of the things on the side of the paper that don't? And how can I do more of the things on the side of the paper that do? Yeah. And how can I just take action right now to do it? What would that look like? Like right now we're sitting outside. We have a podcast mic between us. We are just doing it, right? Mm-hmm. And is this bringing you joy? Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Is it making you could, excited? Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not, you know, we're not in we're not in a studio. Although that, that would also be great. And there may be, um, and, and you know, one other thing on that, which, you know, I'm giving you guys kind of like this big download right now. We can get into more specifics, but... It is so important that you give yourself the permission to pivot at any time, at any time. The fact that you went to bed and thought one thing and woke up the next morning thinking another thing, it's okay. Yeah. And I think when you can change that thought process or at least practice it, because of course this isn't something we change overnight, we really have to do this work, is instead of waking up like, oh, I'm almost exhausted by myself, by how much I'm changing. Do you ever feel like that? Yes. Like 1,000%. It is... And I know, well, yeah, and I was even thinking about that a little bit when you were talking about mm-hmm. sometimes people are just like, oh, yeah, like manifesting generators, mm-hmm. like, you know, how do they do it all? Like, yeah. I want to do all those things yeah. too. And it's like, I mean, definitely the downside, I think, I mean, there, you know, like I talk about, like, there's a shine and shadow to every Enneagram number, to every human design, you know, and the, being able to manage multiple things, have those irons in the fire mm-hmm. is definitely a shine of the manifesting generator. Um Like a shadow is definitely, it just, it feels like this internal struggle all the time. It's exhausting. Like, you know, and I've got, I've definitely gotten better about that. Um, Mm -hmm. And especially like as I've been able to like dive more into my human design and stuff like that, that that's actually helped a lot. Um, Give me some of that permission and just be like, okay, instead of how can I be exhausted? Like, how can I just expect that I am going to want to switch things up sometimes. And like, you know, yeah, I might go to bed one night and the next morning it's, I want to do something completely different. And how can I, yeah, expect, like the expectations change a little bit instead of being like, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's the plan, which this totally used to be me. This is like totally an eogram three. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to do. Here's the plan. And, um, and I'm going to take steps Mm -hmm. towards that plan every single day. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bringing that multi-passionateness in, it's yeah. just like, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's the plan. But if it changes along the way, 
Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's still, like, so much easier said than done. Um, but, yeah, I've, like, continued to get better about that. It, it's so real. And, actually, I want to I wanna g- offer another lens around um, that word you use, expectation. Yeah. It's because, to me, that is the three – that is mm-hmm. the three talking still in the sense of like, yeah. in, and I, and I think you actually mean expectation in the way that I'm going to explain it right now. I don't actually know, know that you mean, cause, and you know, I'm in my own kind of, like, I will say, um, I just mentioned this to a client yesterday that I'm in my own self discovery of like kind of rediscovering and redefining what that mm-hmm. word means to me, expectation. Yeah. Um, and I will say that for, I don't know that expectation does a multi-passionate, super creative, really nuanced human being any justice. Mm. I think that expectation leads to disappointment. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we always say, like, I've said this to people, oh, my gosh, so many times. I'm so guilty of this. You exceeded my expectations times 10, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And I need to change <laughs> that language. And I, I'm, i you know, like I said, so always very transparently in process of discovering new words and new ways and new, new language to give things that um, are around how I feel about things. But mm-hmm. I think that for someone like you, for that manifesting generator type, especially that puts so much pressure on themselves, it's more like instead of shifting expectation, almost not shifting anything at all and letting grace in. Yeah. Like yeah. giving yourself, because it kind of almost feels like, I had someone explain it to me, like it always feels like I'm just like eating humble pie. You know, I set, I'm so, well, you know, here's the thing. I think being ambitious is your, one of your best qualities. Like people tend to say to, um, to manifesting generators and even a lot, you know, a lot of us, no matter the type, you're so ambitious and they almost use that against us. It's like war word. Yes. I'm not sure what you meant by that, but yes, I am ambitious and you're absolutely right about that. Mm -hmm. Um, MGs will also get the comments like, oh, you're so busy. Yeah. And it's like, and, and sometimes that can be a little triggering too. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, well, yeah, if you mean that I've got a lot of irons in the fire, you're right. Yeah. And that's exactly what that is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, how can we actually ask people, like, I mean, to bring up a bigger topic, like how can we ask people better questions Yeah. in the sense of if that was really the case, like if someone was really wondering that, how about they ask you like, wow, the work that you're doing seems to really fill you up. Can you tell me more about it? Yes. Like, how can we reposition those questions? You know, of course, I think we say things without, like, we don't mean to ever yeah. harm. And we don't, like, you don't have a multi-passion, although this should probably be a t-shirt that you make. It's like <laughs> just a t-shirt that says multi-passion across it because we do need to approach the way that we work, coach, guide, and lead multi-passionate people because we need to be able to give them the tools to embrace and enhance what they do versus put them down and put them in a box. Yes. Period. Yeah. And we have people without this knowledge everywhere. And again, are doing it really, they're they're not meaning any harm. It's just that they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah. I didn't even actually think about this until now. I think that I probably like a trigger moment for me being a multi-passionate like I'm sure that I like put this like memory into a box and mm-hmm. like put it in storage somewhere yeah. like but I remember one time in college that I had somebody tell me like your life makes me dizzy mm-hmm. I yeah. I can't yeah that's so like wild that that like came up during this conversation um and I wasn't like I mean, I was, like, a little bit triggered. Like, it definitely felt like I was being put down. Um, I mean, it didn't really change because of Mm -hmm. that. But, you know, even, like, I do think that person was actually trying. I I don't think that they had great intent saying it. I, but, yeah, that was, like, hard. It was still, like, hard to hear. It was, like, oh, wait, am I, like, doing, am I doing something wrong? Yeah. You know, am I living life not how I'm supposed to. Right. Um, when really like I was, I was like the president of like a club on campus. Like I, you know, of course was taking like 
20 credit hours like year round, like all that kind of stuff. But um, I had multiple things going on, but they did all light me up Mm -hmm. and I was excited by them. I mean, yeah, I was a little exhausted. I definitely like in college, I definitely pushed it a little too far, but um, I didn't want to let go of everything because everything did light me up. I can't even imagine how you felt when you heard that. I know I'm a generator and I know that when people tell me I have some like triggers around busyness cause it's definitely an addiction of mine. And so when people say to me like, Oh, you look so busy again, it's for lack of knowledge. They're yep. saying it almost to be, um, to be rewarding and kind, but mm-hmm. it's not taken that way. Yeah. Right. And again, how can we just ask people mm-hmm. how they seem or how they are? Right. Yeah. And, and it is because of this digital age we look at because we are so in touch with people, which is so fantastic that we mm-hmm. can stay so... I always know what's going on in your life. Yeah. Right? From yeah. your Instagram <laughs> stories or from your travels. And I love that. Like, I love yeah. being so in touch to you. Um, there's other ways of doing that, right? Like sending yeah. an email or a text message or calling you or whatever. But I think that that we just need to, to approach it differently mm-hmm. because the person who said that, they were actually projecting... They're probably a projector. They yeah. Projecting <laughs> their own... Um, their own insecurity around not being enough and not doing enough, mm-hmm. right? And that is taken. That makes all of a sudden this person who feels on fire when they are, when they are doing multiple things that light them up, that they need to all of a sudden slow down. Yeah, and that would never light your heart on fire. Mm-hmm. And you and I were talking about this earlier. I'm glad that you just brought this up because um, we were Taylor and I were talking about how the different about the different pieces around how overwhelming college can be, for example, like picking a major to a multi-passionate, um, super creative person. And that is, and that's true. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling like I have, I was the first one to go to college in my family. I didn't really have a lot of guidance. I was like, I mean, you know, it just felt overwhelming. Yeah. I also loved the college experience because I was able to take a sociology class and yeah. take a, and you know, I will say it was towards the end of my college years when you were out of those initial classes yeah. and primary classes you needed to take. But, um, I mentioned last night I took, I mean, my last year of college, I took a class on wine. I took yeah. a class. I got to learn about winemaking. Um, I took a class. I loved my sociology classes. I loved my history classes. I loved my journalism classes. I loved my communications mm-hmm. class. I mean, I really, there wasn't anything. And I did always feel like excited to learn and excited yeah. to, I mean, that is probably the, one of the times I felt most alive and mm-hmm. that wouldn't surprise me, you know, looking to, I'm sure there are studies that have been done but to look at the data of how someone can really thrive in a setting like that where they are able to highlight their, their, their dimensions. They're able to take a history class and an art class and a this and that and, and, and. And then when it comes to getting more specific and picking a major or even graduating and then feeling that they have to go get a job, what yes. a daunting experience that must be. Yeah. Is that how it felt for you? Yes. Yeah. And again, like, you know, it's just, it's, you know, wild, like what this conversation brings up for me, because like I, yeah, went straight from, um, yeah, college to, well, I worked in like a family business, like towards the end of college, Mm -hmm. um, like part-time. And then I worked there full-time until, um, my husband and I had like, I graduated a semester before him and we were moving to Kansas city once he graduated. So I had a little bit of a, like, some extra time Mm -hmm. after college. So I did full time in that. And then I stayed within that industry. It was the insurance industry. I think that's an amazing industry to work in. I have a lot of great things to say about it. It wasn't great for me Mm -hmm. as a manifesting generator, for sure. I mean, I know it's still not for everybody, but um, I struck, like, I think it was like within a month of working full time at that job Mm -hmm. that I was like, I have to do something else. Like I like just had that need because I was done with like college classes and stuff. I was like, I need to start Mm -hmm. something and like have something extra. And that's when my mom and I started a business together. I like remember I texted her like over my lunch break. I was like, okay, if we're, we've talked about doing this like online shop, if we're going to do it, let's do it. And she's like, yep, I'm in. So there was just like, there was totally that need because Mm -hmm. it was like immediately like having a job yeah. that I was like did something else, like grasping for like something else. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting. And the message that we hear is 
Well, you know, I think they nodded to this earlier without even realizing, but that power, we often talk about this, Taylor, you and I, like the power of and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, versus or, or but. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be that. And I think when a multi-passionate person can can embrace the the and the addition to Mm -hmm. I can be like you're multifaceted everyone is multifaceted in their emotion we are extremely intelligent human Mm -hmm. beings not to talk not to mention emotional intelligence how we can be joyful and extremely sad at the same time yeah we we can hold emotions in ways that are I mean beyond I mean it Mm -hmm. almost doesn't even like make sense right the same goes for the things that we perform because the things that we do and perform and make a credit of, like, those those dictate a lot of emotion, too. Mm-hmm. And I think that we've somehow along the way made it a bad thing, have been told by, we were saying earlier, multiple people throughout our lives without knowing anything about them and anything yeah. about their journey or their time or whatever. Or maybe we do know a lot about them yeah. their journey and time. <laughs> But that they are, that they're, that as a multi-passionate, you're wrong. Yeah. And that it's not right. Mm-hmm. And that there is a right way of doing things. And it, I mean, it's like from very, you know, we always ask like that question to children. I remember I read Michelle Obama's book that, you know, Becoming and like mm-hmm. about what that is and what are, you know, she talks a lot about, I ask kids like, what are you becoming yeah. versus what do you want to be when you grow up? And yeah. like, that was just such a lovely takeaway around, um, around that. Mm-hmm. And it's true. It's like, how could we ever expect, and it's always cute to ask them because it's always something different and that's the beauty of it maybe. Um, but how, why are we like putting pressure on that from such an early age? Yeah. And again, not the intention. That's not, yeah. it's not our intention. We don't even, we would never knowingly put pressure on a mm-hmm. child, but from a very early age, it's kind of laid out that we must do We must have one path. The path has to be linear because that Mm -hmm. makes the people who are supporting us feel safe. Yep. Um, And the path of a manifesting generator is anything but linear. The path of a multi-passionate is anything but linear. Yeah. And if we can embrace that and help them along the way, I think that's that's everything. For example, I was just thinking like more specifically career-wise, I used to plan event um, weddings, events, and that is what a great job for someone who maybe you know doesn't always doesn't feel like they want an entrepreneur to work with a bunch of different whatever you can be really good at that at planning Mm -hmm. events and have many different clients who have all different types of weddings and have all different types of this or like i used to work with a lot of floral designers for example Mm -hmm. and they you know booked hundreds of weddings and they all had a different style and type Right. Yeah. And they got to use their creativity in much different ways. And I find that that holds the attention of, of creative people. You know, I'm using this service industry as an example. Mm-hmm. There's many, many other things. I mean, even in, um, even when I was in corporate events, I would, I would work with corporate event planners. The, co- the corporation would have an in-house event planner and they would plan the CEO summit and the president's club and the, you know, advantage winners circle, you know, all these different things. And so, that was still multifaceted in the projects that they got to do, Mm -hmm. right? So there are ways, there definitely are ways to embrace your dimensions outside of entrepreneurship. There's no doubt about it. Um, But I think it's just that. And I think it's important for for leaders to see that in us. I think it's important Mm -hmm. for people to see that in multi-passionate people and, and then how can you use it to your advantage? So if you are a leader, it's like, and you have the people like that on your team, there's a good chance. Like if you're trying to put a manifesting generator or someone who's really multi-passionate in a box, they're not going to give you the best work. Yeah. They're not, you're not going to get the best quality of work. They, you may have high turnover. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's that you do hire really specifically someone else, you yeah. know, whatever that yep. looks like. Um, it may not be the right move for you and that's okay. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. So again, I think it's all in how it's more of at the root of it. Like how do we approach it from a different direction to actually help multi-passionate human beings enhance their gifts, shine bright versus bog them down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, I love this. Hey, I wanted to hop in here real quick to say that if you're digging this podcast, I would love nothing more than for you to take a screenshot of you tuning in or a screenshot of your phone, share it on Instagram stories and tag me so we can connect. And in doing so, not only does it help me reach more people with this podcast, but it also inspires all your amazing high achiever friends to pursue growth as well. It's official. I have hopped on the CBD bandwagon. I do not know why I waited so dang long to introduce this amazing product into my life. I have been using CBD for my period pain, ovulation pain, travel anxiety, and to help me sleep if I have had any alcohol or sugar too late in the night. The company I trust for all my CBD needs is Soul CBD. Their products are organically farmed, third-party tested, and contain zero THC, and they're gluten-free. I love the peppermint CBD oil drops or the strawberry gummies for traveling, and especially I love their alert CBD capsules. I try to avoid caffeine as much as possible, and these alert capsules give my brain a boost when I need it without getting jittery or harming my adrenals and contain very, very little caffeine. You can get $20 off your order when you use the link in the show notes. Okay, so one of the things I did want to bring up just because I thought it was crazy interesting is I just, I tried to like Google the definition of like (laughs) multi-passionate. There isn't an official definition of that. Um, But what came up was like an excerpt from an article and I'm going to read it. It said, multi-passionate people are those that are interested in everything. They have a wide range of skills and sometimes have trouble narrowing down exactly what it is that they want out of life. I mean, I was like, come on. really? <laughs> There's like a hundred different things wrong with that sentence yes. or that definition. Yes. You know, that I think sometimes like I have also always had difficulty embracing my multi-passionateness mm-hmm. um, because I always felt like I was coming off flaky, scattered, Um, definitely like, you know, Jack or Jane of all trades Mm -hmm. type of thing, like unprofessional, all of those things. But like, I do want to say like multi-passionate people are not interested in everything. (laughs) Number one, (laughs) Um, I'm definitely not interested in everything. I'm interested in a lot of things. Um, And I you know, multi-passionate people usually have a good idea of what they want out of life. But a lot of times it's like the vehicle of like, it's either like the how you get there or, um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is just like the how. Yes. It's just big question mark. (laughs) The container, the vehicle. Yes. So right about that. Yes to all of that. I think that it's, um, it's so interesting that, yeah, that definition is bogus, right? It's like because it focuses on nothing but the yeah. negative about yeah. who you are. Um, <laughs> right? Like, no wonder, <laughs> again, it's like root cause. Like, no wonder multinational yeah. people feel so, like, pushed to the side or that they are less yeah. than or not worthy of or whatever the thing may be. And I think that the definition needs to be rewritten yeah (laughs) from the from the very beginning and it's also just an opportunity to because for example you are the least flaky person I know um that's good it's I know (laughs) there's no doubt about it right like absolutely no doubt about it and the majority of manifesting generators that I know are the least flaky people I know um and I think what maybe happens is who knows, like a manifesting generator or multi-passionate person may have written that definition because oh, yeah. they are at war with themselves yep. in their mind for feeling scattered. Yeah. And there's like, there's tools around feeling scattered, right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, well everything, all those like, brilliant ideas that you mm-hmm. have, first of all, they're brilliant. <laughs> Second of all, get them down on paper. Yeah. And then one by one asking yourself like, does the idea to open a nail salon today, does it light me up? Tomorrow, yeah. does it light me up? The idea to become a botanist, does that light me? Like, whatever that big picture, I mean, you're so good at really, like, helping drive home purpose with people, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that if you – you can be focused and multifaceted. Yeah. It's possible. Mm-hmm. It's possible for everyone, right? I mean, it's so interesting, too, because we find that people who um, are maybe not so great or don't respect time – 
like time boundaries for yep. example if they're always showing up late or leaving late or you know whatever it may be it's actually a, it's self-respect they it's, yeah it's always always projected back onto self mm-hmm. and that is something far more that's actually p- typically conditioning it's far more than like a design, like something you were born with. Yeah. You, it's maybe learn, like if you have parents who relate to everything, it's either I've had, I've had, I know a lot of people who have parents that relate to everything. And because of that, and because it made them so just frustrated mm-hmm. or felt disorganized, they are then early to everything. Yep. Or that's all they know. Yeah. They don't actually have never been given tactical, tangible examples of what it feels like to be on time. Mm -hmm. They live in that constant, you know, so there's so many different pieces of it. And so that's such a generalized statement. That's again, just like flat out, not true. So Mm -hmm. I feel like there is this movement and, you know, manifesting generators and generators are like, make up about 80% of the population. Like there are, they, we are the reason Starbucks opens up at 5.30 a.m. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're, they're the movers. They are the shakers. They are the people that get things done. And not to say that no one else does. It's just that um, it, your gifts are so important and are so needed. Mm-hmm. And I think because they seem to get put to the side and we, it, from maybe from the outside looking in, it's that it looks, maybe the word is like inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Why is inconsistent bad? It's yeah. maybe because we use the word to describe like, um, oh, you've had inconsistent test results or you've had inconsistent whatever, like, or inconsistent yeah. days that you ate healthy. It's yeah. like, well, yeah, of course I did because there's, <laughs> if there's life or whatever. So I think that again, it's just how can we like reframe, um, I mean, we could talk about this for every type, like how you can, how you can reframe, but as what I think is really happening here is that multi-passionate people are actually not going after what they really want because they believe that staying in a box or doing it by, you know, albeit societal standards or what they were kind of conditioned to think is the right way. Mm -hmm. And that's how we end up with people who live a lifetime of doubt and unhappiness and not feeling fulfilled. And yeah, that is just something that I know you and I both do not want for people. Yeah, And that I think is the biggest thing. And when, and also I feel like the entire reason we're having this conversation is because you've been in a place where you've really felt at the, you know, maybe at the, at toe to toe with fighting that fight, that resistance yeah. between this is how I should be doing it, but this is how I'm feeling I should do mm-hmm. it. And then also embracing it. Yeah. And I know it's something that you're still working on. A hundred percent. Every day. <laughs> well, cause that's the work for you, right? Yeah. Anytime that we feel resistance, there is opportunity to build resilience Mm -hmm. anytime. Right. And I mean, I see you flexing that muscle all the time. I think that's just it though. It's, we can't, we don't just wake up one morning with resilience and we talk about this a lot, but how can, how can we do more of that? How can we actually become more resilient in the face of when someone says to to you, like (laughs) your life is dizzying to me. Yeah. I mean, right? Like at our worst, at our at our worst, we turn around and say, "Well, your life seems seems boring to me." Like, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, that's not what it's about. Obviously, yeah, you probably would not say that. I don't know, maybe <laughs> some people would, but um, it's it's all perspective, and I think that's why it's so important that, like, you know, we embrace everything, and also like share with people like the transparency of that too. Like, yeah, that's why it's not it's not productive to yeah. have a conversation like that with someone who's multi passionate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yeah. just love I like I mean truly I just I do think like you're the queen of like guiding people around this because I just like soak up like all of your metaphors and like your reframes <laughs> and just everything I think has been so great and like so helpful. Thank you. I love all of it. I appreciate you. Um <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> um it's fun. To kind of, like, round things out before we kind of wrap yeah. up, um, you work with, like, so obviously we've established you work with lots of multi-passionate people. Mm-hmm. What are um, what are some things that you see working really well for them that, you know, can really kind of help pull them out of, um, you know, like, well, for example, like, I know for me a lot of it is, like, how do I make this work? Okay. Like I see myself spreading mm-hmm. things out. How do I make it work? I feel like I am losing my mind. I'm like frustrated, like all the things. Um, 
And I know I'm not alone in that. I've had conversations with people. So anyways, what are some things that you see working really well for multi-passionate people? Um, more so in like the integration. Mm. Okay. So love this question because where I always see MGs, multi-passionate people getting stuck up is in the how of how to get things done. So if you yeah. even look at it, like in just the three, like the trifecta of the who, the what, and the how, right. Mm-hmm. And take that into business. It's who you're serving, what you're offering. And I always tell my multi-passionate people, you don't need to, you don't need to niche anywhere that just period. But I would like you to find focus in one of those area, mm-hmm. areas. So it's either who you're serving, getting a, getting focused around that. Yeah. Um, what it is that you're offering, getting focused around that. Mm-hmm. Because in some cases, for example, if someone comes to you and you have 25 offers, they're just feeling overwhelmed. Totally. And so therefore, that's just at a detriment to you. Yeah. And if you really looked at it at the end of the day, you'd probably be like, oh, no, it's actually just these 10 that I love. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Let's just go yeah. ahead and we don't have to ever completely burn those down we can archive them and leave them there and if you want to pull and move and Mm -hmm. you have all the permission to be as creative as you want every day Mm -hmm. you can change out that that service but as long as it is clear to whoever's coming your way at this very moment how they can be a part of your world then good and i always say you know here's the thing i think support is the biggest thing yes as someone who is multi-passionate you deserve and require support you require yes. a different level of support. Mm-hmm. You require a level of support. To, and I don't mean someone who is going to be, you know, sometimes, sometimes people say, I need that. And I'd give plenty of tough love, but I need that tough love. Like I need someone mm-hmm. to just kind of shake me and put me, you know, my place. And it's like, well, maybe, but like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> but if like, we just embrace where you're at and the yeah. place that you're at um, and also help to guide you. It, I think that, at multi-passionate because you move so quickly and because you don't move at the speed of other people you will sometimes always feel like I can't find the help that I need in order to to bring this where I need to bring it or whatever but if you but I think that like over communicating is extremely important getting the support that you need whether that's a coach or a guide or a mentor or whoever it is to really help help you figure out that how because it what isn't up to you um, is knowing everything yeah. and figuring out everything. That yeah. is not always true. So I often say that to you, like, come to me with the idea and then let's put together how this, what, what's possible to bring this to life. And then I'm still throughout the whole process going to ask you, how does it feel? Mm-hmm. Putting yeah. that idea into this container, like, okay, we have this many, op- this many options in front of you. Like if we did it option A, option B, option C, what feels best, Taylor? Mm-hmm. And you can say, well, actually, I like C with a little dash of A. Okay, like let's put that together. Then. Yeah. Um, and so I think finding people that will embrace your unique type and give you options, mm-hmm. I think is extremely important to surround yourself by people like that. And it may be difficult, you know, I yeah. think that's, that's huge. And so, um, finding the people that will help you, that will help along the how, like, yeah. and, cause you really don't, don't need that. Um, and yeah, support embracing your dimensions, I think is everything giving yourself the permission as you move really quickly, you're probably not going to always know how to do everything. You may be like today I want to be a pilot and tomorrow I want to be an Eskimo. I don't really know. You know, it's just like, well, you move so quickly. You may not have the time to, um, know everything there is to know about being a pilot, Mm -hmm. you know? And so going to, that's typically why generators and manifesting generators work really well together is because we have, you know, we kind of can go a little bit deeper with you on those things. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, if, if you can really find that strong support system and if you can give yourself the permission to embrace it and work at that and ship away at that, um, not getting caught up, caught up in the how, or at least of course, attempting to allowing yourself to lean in to it and own that. Like, would you yeah. be proud if you can say that you'd be proud to wear the t-shirt that says multi-passionate, then great. But if you can't, there's work to be done. Yeah. You know, there's work to be done. If we don't want to scream it from the rooftops, Mm -hmm. um, then there's work to be done around that because you are so needed and it's like (laughs) so important that you come with all of your brilliant ideas. That's, they're, they're just, they're essential. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say. Yes. I love that. I think, I mean, yeah, there's a huge identity like shift or evolution that I think comes along with that of just being able to be confident and okay yes I'm like passionate about a lot of things and I do want to pursue them um 
with, yeah, like, I like that you used the analogy of, like, just chipping away Mm -hmm. at that because that's totally how it feels. Like, I feel like that process is, like, I still have so much in that process to go, um, but I've come a long ways. Like, and it's just, like, a little bit at a time um, of really stepping into that label and owning it. And, like, that's a label that I want to be, like, 100% confident like labeling myself as yeah I'm very close yeah. but still some work yeah. um yeah you are yeah and yeah the support piece is huge because I think also like for me what's been really helpful is I know and this is this can apply to a lot of people I yeah. know especially like multi-passionate manifesting generators um it's very helpful for me to like word vomit at you <laughs> and you're like okay I picked up on this pattern, this pattern. You said this word like three times, like, you know, and like having somebody be able to take what can seem like an internal mess or just like a, like sometimes I call it ping pong brain. Like Mm -hmm. I just feel like my brain, just like all of these things going on in my brain, being able to just speak it out loud and having somebody be like, okay, actually this isn't a mess because there were these patterns and like what you said and I know like that can be everybody like anybody who's listening like if it feels like it's a mess if it feels like it's super scattered like there are patterns yes um in the things that you're passionate about things that can be blended things that it works for to like totally be separate Mm -hmm. things whether one is a hobby one's a business there are two different businesses one's a career and one's you know whatever it might be um but that is extremely helpful yeah. from like a support standpoint. Absolutely. I've said this to you before. There's so much power in your patterns. Yeah. And sometimes we can't always see them. I think that's why external, I mean, I have an entire support. I, mean, I would yeah. not be able to survive without a support yeah. system. And again, it's like, how can if you are multi-passionate, we talked about this this morning, if you're multi-passionate, there's a good chance that at some point in your life, you've been told that you are too much. Yes. For someone. 1,000. For yes. And again, not productive at all. Yeah. But when you're walking around with that, I'm too much for people. Mm-hmm. All you're doing is dimming your light. Yes. And that is like ap- the opposite of why you were yeah. put here. You were put yeah. here to just have that grow lighter. And in some seasons, and in some days, and in some circumstances and situations, our light isn't super bright. Mm-hmm. And that's just going to always happen. Unfortunately, that's the yeah. that's the risk free run of being human and experiencing life but I think that if you can put that to the side and if we can again from the very root cause if we can enhance the conversations that we're having with multi-passionate people and make sure that they don't feel like too much that they Mm -hmm. are enough exactly as they are and that when you can you know when a when the multi-passionate person is coming to me and they have all these ideas and like I get excited with them yeah right you need someone to get excited with you and that might not be every person in your life Mm -hmm. and so it's then you make that decision to maybe I don't come to so-and-so with my ideas because I never really leave I I would like their validation but I never really leave feeling good about it yeah um who else can you go to or you know maybe there's that's like a longer look of does that person have have a huge place in in my life you know what does that look like for me because you don't need to change yeah. <laughs> that won't ever change and it shouldn't change. Yeah. Um, because that is, again, how can you, instead of thinking it to your detriment, that mm-hmm. it's one of the worst parts about you, that you have all these ideas and these things that you never act upon or whatever. And how can you, in fact, flip the script and just realize that it is your superpower? Mm-hmm. It's one thing to say it like, okay, I'm going to leave this podcast and I'm really going to say it. What if you believed it though? Yeah. And then you believed it enough to really embrace it. And then you embraced it enough to take action. Mm -hmm. And then you took action enough to see that it works. And then you have enough data for your brain and your body to know that your ideas are really good ideas. And that they'll work in the future. Mm -hmm. And that if you give yourself the opportunity to show up exactly as you are Mm -hmm. in this super flawed, multi-passionate way, like we all are, right? Yes, yep. In the flawed piece. Yeah. Um, that you actually will attract more opportunities, experiences, people in your life that will support that. 
Yeah. Not tell you that you're too much. Not push yeah. you away. Not tell you that you are dizzying to them. Mm-hmm. You know, that is something that is huge. And along the way, I think what happens by embracing is you build the resilience to it. Because someone's yeah. always going to tell you you're too much. Yeah. And then you'll know, like, that's not my person. And that's yeah. not my thing. And that's not who I'm meant to serve or be around or yeah. enter thing here. Whatever it is. Yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. And yeah, one last piece I think that like has really helped me also, like you mentioned, like, okay, finding like some focus within it um, is, you know, things like, especially if you have lots and lots of ideas that you want to act upon. I know it's really difficult to focus on one, Mm -hmm. but just because something is a no right now doesn't mean it's a no forever. You know, it's just a no right now um and so you can have like your idea notebook open up a google doc like put everything in one place like you know being able to kind of focus on what's this first thing that i kind of want to tackle and like get into motion and bring to life and you have that list of things that's like okay when you're ready like start pulling from things and you can start implementing but you can also you know keep adding to that list too and that's been something that's really helped me is because it's like, okay, perfect. These are all the ideas and things that I want to do. They will happen. If I evolve, change, pivot, that's also great. I might remove some, add some, whatever. But I know I'm confident in myself that I'm going to put them in motion. I'm just not putting those in motion right now. Right. But that's okay. And that has helped me a lot because if I – I know for me, like if I, and this is part of like Enneagram three, like if I don't see that something is going to be in motion in the next like 10 to 15 years, Mm -hmm. it still like feels like a piece of me is like missing. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like having that, like, yes, it will be in motion. Like it like will happen was like a huge mindset shift for me. Absolutely. The, I mean, the notebook of a manifesting generator of a multi-passionate <laughs> person is a gold mine, right? It's just full yeah. filled with, it's a, it's a matter of if you get to decide when those things happen, they can mm-hmm. all happen together. You can do that. You may burn, burn yourself out. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's all possible, mm-hmm. but proving to yourself, it's like you're a multi-passionate person that feels held back. That doesn't feel embraced. Proving to yourself that you can do mm-hmm. it. Proving to yourself that you kind of went after that kind of wild, crazy idea. Mm-hmm. And by doing that wild and crazy idea, it also doesn't define you. You don't have to be that person forever. And you can wake up tomorrow and totally pivot and you can change your mind. And you, you know, these again are typically people who sell off cut their companies and mm-hmm. start new ones. And it, it's, it's all doable. Yeah. Um, finding some focus in it, I think is always, is always really important. Mm-hmm. And, um, you can, yeah, again, you can be full, focused and multi-passionate. Yeah. It's possible. Yes. It's possible for you. Yes. It's just practice. <laughs> yes. It's practice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. So um, before I kind of get to the final question, yeah. tell us, like, where we can find you online. Yeah. What is it that you do? How can people work with you? Just all of the things quenched. Yes. Well, as you said, like the unofficial coach of multi-passionate yes. people. Yes. Um, <laughs> Highly <sure>. recommend. 100 <laughs> out of 100. Yes. we. I would love to see ev- everyone over on Instagram. That's kind of the hub for our community. As of right now, we are um, launching our a fuller expression of our community early next year in 2022. And um, we are always hanging out there on Instagram though through the end of the year we have our free weekly meetup called fill up your cup which is every single week we have a different subject matter we focus in on both the head work and the heart work of Mm -hmm. entrepreneurship to really hope to create more whole leaders that Mm -hmm. have um, the tools that they really need to not only enhance their business but enhance their journey along the way too so make sure you check that out. You'll find information about that on Instagram. That will then take you to our website. And you can kind of, again, it's like a feast for the yes. multi-passionate. You can kind of tr- choose your adventure from there. <laughs> yes. Perfect. And I'll put everything in the show notes also. So, yes. Okay. And then last question. What are, like, if, if you could choose three, it's okay mm. if it's a little more or like two or whatever, <laughs> but three is like a guideline. Okay. Um, three pieces of advice that you would give to high performers that mm-hmm. are just like really in the thick of pursuing big things. Trust the process. Trust yourself. That I mean, that is my life motto. I'm getting it tattooed soon on me. Yes. It's been the thing that has 
push me forward. That um, I think that the opposite of like trust is fear. And you and I were talking a lot about that. Like if I don't trust something, I, t- I typically personally yeah. fear it. Yeah. Um, and if I were to really remove fear, it would look like I was trusting myself in any venture, in any opportunity, through every single step, through every single, you name it. Mm-hmm. And if we can trust the process and kind of let go, if you will, which feels very scary, especially mm-hmm. over here to this recovering perfectionist, <laughs> um, myself, I think you become limitless. And I think as high performers, that's something that we really in in essence are are pursuing is how Mm -hmm. can I feel limitless how can Mm -hmm. I feel vibrant how can I feel um the best that I've ever have been or perform at the highest level Mm -hmm. and I think that that requires us to remove barriers that we put in front of ourselves and so if we can lean into trust the process that by nature means that we ultimately have to trust ourselves and I think that's the the ultimate yeah, advice. Yes, I love it. <laughs> For myself, at least. Yeah, I, I know. I have to keep telling myself I'm reminding myself. Yeah, advice we give is also advice we all need. <laughs> like, it's so true. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's so many other incredible, every day I find a different quote I'm inspired by or a different, yeah. you know, methodology or whatever it may be, but that's been one that's rung true and stayed the most um, for me. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much thank you. for hopping on. <laughs> um, I'll have everything in the show notes Perfect. and um, everybody be sure to go follow Quint Collective on Instagram. Yes. It's a very amazing follow. Um, and yeah, hope everybody enjoyed this conversation. This is like, we went a lot of different places that yeah. I think like nobody is talking about in this space, yeah. which is exciting. I so it only sparks more conversation. Yes. More casual conversation. Yes. With yes. airplanes and dogs <laughs> and wind chimes going by. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're the best. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. That was really good. That was so like twisty and turny and yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for joining us this week. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you can receive new episodes right when they're released. And if you're enjoying this podcast, I'd love for you to leave us a review in Apple Podcasts. Reviews are one of the major ways that Apple ranks their podcasts. So even though it only takes a few seconds, it really does make a huge difference. Lastly, you can head to my Instagram post today and comment your biggest takeaway from this episode so we can keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.